opening of the Chalkeetna River is now within the ability of an average adult. Before a trip can start, large amounts of food and equipment must first be flown in by the bush pilots. The guides unload all the equipment, then starts the tremendous task of assemblage and organization. After an exciting trip up the River Canyon, we arrive by float plane. For those who are not used to this type of travel, the first steps to the ground may be a bit shaky. But this breathtaking flight into the wilds of Alaska will never be forgotten. The guides receive an up-to-date report on the River Canyon, making sure no new trees have fallen across the river. After everyone has arrived, there is a comprehensive safety lecture to prepare for the week to come. There are people like John Ireland who spend most of their lives isolated in the remote regions of Alaska. They enjoy the winters even with the extreme cold. And during the summer, Alaska is the land of the midnight sun with warm weather and 20 hours of daylight. After the equipment loading is complete, every knot double checked, our river adventure begins.
while drifting down Prairie Creek, we have the opportunity to observe the dramatic life cycle of the salmon. Every year, like clockwork, the salmon leave the sea to return to their place of birth. Before the salmon return to Prairie Creek, they must swim for hundreds of miles, climbing rapids and avoiding bears. After spawning, which ensures the survival of the species, the salmon do not return to the sea. Instead, they remain in Prairie Creek to die. Marine biologists still do not understand what drives the salmon to overcome all these obstacles and then not return to the sea. Many people believe grizzlies to be unpredictable killers. Actually, they are a lot more predictable than men. Men invade the bear's home with cameras, hoping to come back with great photographs. Some men invade the bear's home with guns, hoping to come back with a great rug. The grizzly, however, tries to avoid man and will only attack when cornered or while defending food or young. Spruce trees like this are territorial markers for bears. The hair is from a bear rubbing his back. The scars are made to show other bears his size. If another bear comes along and cannot reach as high, he will usually leave, thus avoiding a fight. My wife, Sandy, with over eight years of rafting experience, is at home behind the oars. Bob Reed, the third member of our crew, has been rowing rivers for almost 15 years. River trips seem to bring people together. Everyone becomes involved and are willing to help one another. Many friendships that will endure a lifetime are formed. Along the way, there are many special places which we will spend time studying wildlife.
While hiking in Alaska, it is possible to come between a bear and her cubs, or to surprise a sleeping bear. To avoid this, we make plenty of noise while hiking through the brush. All of our guides carry firearms. There's an old saying, when you're armed and you meet a bear, you wonder what he's going to do. When you're not armed, you wonder what you're going to do. With two days of white water still to come, we break camp, leaving the security of our last cabin behind. Everyone prepares themselves to meet the challenge of the Talkeetna River. Our thoughts may wander to names like Gary's Gates, Sluice Box, Entrance Exam, or The Toilet. These are the rapids of the Talkeetna Canyon. This is the first day that the river necessitates the wearing of wetsuits. Wetsuits prevent hypothermia by keeping our bodies warm. The equipment is packed with extreme care. With professional guides and equipment, the trip has been made as safe as possible. Even so, there is still some risk involved. What has been learned about whitewater rafting in the last few days now becomes essential, for safety is the responsibility of everyone involved. When at last all is ready, we board the rafts and float to the confluence of the Talkeetna River.
while standing above the entrance of the sluice box with the roar of the canyon in our ears. The excitement builds. This is the most continuous section of white water being offered anywhere in the world. 14 miles of non-stop action just around the corner.
At last, emerging through pearly gates, we leave the sluice box behind. Tired and wet, we look forward to hot coffee and a warm fire. The first sign of civilization is a lonely prospector who joins us for dinner. After a hot meal and change of clothes, even the rain cannot wash away the joyful mood. Though the trip has come to an end, our new understanding and appreciation of wild rivers will last forever.